This is a HeadGum Podcast. Have I done it before? I did, right? Oh, I did. You've done it like three or four times. Get out of here, really? <laughs> you don't remember doing my show three or four times? It's the or that's tripping me up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you've actually, over the last four or five years, you've done it multiple times. <laughs> I apologize. Well, wait, wait, now, wait a minute. Um, this like setup where you're talking to, well, it's, it's probably been over Zoom. It's been over right. Zoom oh, the, every time, I think. Okay. That makes sense. So maybe that's tripping you up? I don't know. Well, it, the thing is, like, during um, when COVID started, um, I was uh, starting to do a bunch of press for this movie that I'd done called The Dark Divide. And I think I had two things that came out yeah. around then, but then they couldn't have screenings or anything like that. So the amount of zoom podcast that i did for which is promo was like quadrupled what it would normally be so everything <laughs> right. was done so uh i apologize if i no you know, no that's okay. but i mean i did so many I, <laughs> but also because confusingly we've also I, I, I we've also been on some lineups in in person at like the bell house oh yeah i know that a, but i'm not yeah. uh I was uh, specifically about uh, f uh, fake the nation. Yeah, what you do here, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. What's over here? What's usually there? It just says head gum. Yeah, oh. normally. Yeah. Again, you gotta get your. <laughs> I know. Up. I know. What are we doing? You gotta get no, your but, art up. You there. know what's interesting is I have like I have been thinking about changing my art for like a mid, like very long time. That my show has been going on well, since twenty sixteen. Like you don't have any art. <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. I have. It, <laughs> so... I know. It's just like me and my handwritten. Um, no, we have art. It's just like it's just old. You know, right. it's the podcast has been going since 2016, so it's like you know. Oh, so you only have a few years left of <laughs> of your. I know it's it's obligatory for every United States citizen above the age of 18 to, <laughs> to have, like a podcast, have a podcast, right? And but like, your and I get service to retire, is over, right? <laughs> yeah, I get yeah, to you're retire acquired. out of it. Yeah, and it, then do I get up some sort of a, a like a, a is it is it part of my social security check? Exactly. <laughs> like my yeah. Podcasting it, years. Yes, you get a can of soup <laughs> yeah, every yeah, other yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's funny because except I, I have to make sure I say this. Except for Amy's uh, vegetarian lentil, oh my gosh, it's not on that's the list. not included. That's not. Wait, included. is this your first podcast? Yeah, it's my only podcast. I look. I went into this. <laughs> I was not. Uh, I, I also don't, and I don't say this in any kind of with uh, judgment or, or denigration, but I just don't listen to podcasts. Like I know a okay. bunch of people, my yeah. wife included, who listen to a lot of podcasts. And I listened at her behest, I listened to Serial, which I listened to maybe three episodes. Oh, I, you didn't get sucked into the I whole. I didn't. Wow. I didn't. Okay. Um, the uh, and then she had me. Uh, we were driving during COVID. We drove down to Atlanta. Uh, uh, my daughter, who was, I guess, four at the time, when was COVID. <laughs> um, and and we took. We just drove uh, to my family. Yeah. Um, you know, because that was back towards the beginning. We're like, who knows how long this is gonna go? Right. Um, and uh, and we would get together every uh, summer and, and uh, my sister and sister-in-law would get a, they have a boat, so they get a lake house on, at Lake Lanier and we'd go there for like five days. And it's Cute. awesome. Yeah. And we couldn't fly, obviously. Uh, so we drove down and there was a lot of availability to listen to yeah. longer podcasts. And, and as we all know, three-year-olds love a podcast. <laughs> she was fascinated by was the- she? Um, No. Um, <laughs> well, when She's my, a when true my crime, wife and I a true crime gal? Uh, yeah, she's true crime. Uh, my wife and I would switch off driving, and then I'd listen on the earbuds. Oh, got you, got you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it was called Rap the the Rabbit Hole or Rabbit Hole. It was okay. a New York Times, maybe the Daily affiliated, and it's fucking great. Oh, I've never heard of it. It's so good and so well produced. It's really okay. smart. It's like one story. Yeah, I think there's six episodes. Okay. It's not. It's not one story. It, it's really smartly done. It's. Uh, and I apologize for not knowing the the specifics of it, but these guys are kind of narrating over their audio of them um, 
approaching a guy they got in contact with who's, I believe, in West Virginia. And he was a guy who got, uh, you know, the, the, the prototype of the guy who got sucked into the uh, QAnon step by step. Right. Didn't start immediately. And he, he's fascinating. really yeah. uh, kind of soft spoken, well spoken, and is just telling you what what, he, happened. what happened. Then it cuts to the guy, the French guy, who uh, fr- who worked at uh, I can't remember which one, Google, I think, and came up with the basically invented the algorithm that fucks people up. That fucks people up, and he now speaks against it. And uh, I think he was fired. Um, Oh, for speaking against it. Yeah, for, for uh, you know, raising oh, questions. This is so it's like all the angles. Yeah, on then this there's thing. an episode. Then all of a sudden, PewDiePie is part of it. Right. And and then it, c- it keeps coming back around to this guy, and then it ends in the most heartbreaking way with a woman, an older woman, like or like you know, I don't know, middle aged, fifty. I don't know what middle age is anymore. Um, who get sucked in does not come out and <sighs> it's it's just it's amazing it's fascinating it's and again it's well, so now smartly i want to listen to it yeah and i'll um emma <laughs> google oh there you are a google <laughs> uh rabbit hole podcast audio <laughs> re nagin farsad <laughs> Okay, um, I'll play it. She has to also put in the Google re Nagin Farsad. Yeah. <laughs> Just see what is the Venn diagram of me and that podcast specifically. <laughs> You'll be you're surprised <laughs> how, how responsible for the algorithm you Which, are. By the way, so I did, I went to a mushroom retreat. I went from a travel magazine, hired me to go to a mushroom retreat and trip balls, whatever. So I did that. Which travel magazine is this? It's a far magazine and the piece is coming out on do, December 4th. How do, I get it? how do I get that plum juicy assignment? I mean, it's the wildest assignment I've ever gotten. And they specifically wanted a comedian to do it. Um, so anyway, so it was, it was wild. So, but, uh, so please tell me, uh, uh, before you get go any further, tell me what it involved. What, what do you did? Yeah. So I went to Jamaica where psilocybin is legal. Okay. I didn't um, know it that. was never even illegal. Yeah. Um, it's just been legal and they've embraced it as like a travel, um, th- you know, thing. They're the, the Amsterdam of exactly. mushrooms. They're yeah. the Amsterdam of mushrooms. Um, and also, I think Amsterdam is also the Amsterdam of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, good, um, probably right. But, um, and so you go there. This was a week long. A retreat, yeah. and a week, a whole yeah. Week. So you arrive like that night. You sort of meet the. It's not. It was nine perfect strangers, and you meet the other strangers. There's an awkward dinner, and then the next day you like dish all of your like problems in life. And there are people there that were like, I've you know I have agoraphobia, and another one's like I have you know this level of trauma from like this kind of assault and like just horrible. Is, stuff. is it is it put out there as a treatment or yeah as yeah. like a therapeutic treatment? Got it. Got it. And then. And I was like, I'm here because I got a gig. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But I, and then I'm going to write about you guys. I'm gonna, yeah, like literally. <laughs> that shouldn't um, fuck you up when you're tripping. <laughs> I know. Um, keep in mind, I have my eye on you. I'm going to be very observant and I'm taking notes. And we then they give us three grams of mushrooms, um, which just to give you an idea of what that means, like a party dose is like 0. 0.5 or oh, one dude, gram. I have taken. Oh, so you know. A lot of mushrooms okay. in my time. Uh, this was my first time. Oh, you've never done it before? I had never done it before. Yeah. And so to start- I was going to say three, with... three is a, that's about what we would take. You'd get like what? a- What? You, you would do three you'd get, grams? You would get an eighth, right? Yeah. And then uh, you'd, you'd kind of divvy them up. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not sure what an eighth- Divvy's uh, up to? Yeah, but it was, uh, I can, I, I know by- Pretty much by side, maybe three grand. How much is was three grand? No, I do not think you were doing three grand. Okay, because then you would have literally gone into another universe. T- tell me, tell me the like if you put it in your hand, how big it's it would be. Several capsules because they are of professionals oh, that capsules. do not use. Oh, we would like, get them and chew them. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We were using capsules. Uh, elegant. We were elegant. Um, and then we would, and they would set us up in these little areas and then we would trip for like four or five hours, but there were facilitators and therapists and a nurse. Four or five hours. That's it? 
yeah, of like intense tripping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when when you they, they and they make us wear eye masks and listen what? To, yeah, because oh, they want that. you to go inside. Oh God! The point no. is ther- therapy. The point is not to have a good time. And it was <laughs> for the record, my entire first trip, I spent five hours crying. Yeah, I, don't... I cried the entire time. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean. Yeah, that's not. Did you find anything therapeutic about it after it was over? Oh yeah, I okay. mean, because apparently I've been carrying some shit. Well, who has? <laughs> right, right, right. But you learned you're a crybaby. I learned. I yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to brag, but I also <laughs> spent a majority of the second trip crying, um, and I spent a good part of the third trip crying. <laughs> So like this sounds I was awful. showing off at, by the end about how good I am at doing that. Did you have to replace your masks so that they were sopping wet? <laughs> Literally I would lay them out at the end of the day because they were wet. They were quite wet. <laughs> and <then laughs> they feral would, raccoons yeah, would come yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, it would come nibble on it. What, what uh this sounds like this sounds terrible, but also maybe a thing you just have to get through and then you you know, you break this barrier, and then you're like, oh, yeah. I, I understand what life's about. Well, because, so there's a couple, I mean, okay, as a parent, I'll tell you one little thing oh, that brother, I was carrying around. I know. Um, no, this is turning into the, the, the psychology pod. Um, but I know the one little thing that I, I, I kept, my brain kept taking me to Morocco, and my husband was on, um, had a job there. He was in the last season of Homeland. So he was shooting in Morocco when my baby, for like three or four months, when my baby, the first six months of her life. So I He was, wasn't around. He wasn't around a, oh, a lot. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it was really rough. So I- For everybody involved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so I went to Morocco. We I took the baby to Morocco for like 10 days and we visited. Mm-hmm. And while we were there, we were at a hotel and I, I was making a cup of tea and I- um, so was standing too close to the kettle, and I burned her finger on oh. the kettle. Okay, so she's like six weeks old. Oh. Right? And I oh, lost gosh. my mind, obviously, and I hated myself, and I yeah. I was so – but here's the crazy thing. I had no memory of that happening. Like, if you had said to me, tell me about Morocco, I would not have remembered that happened because after it happened, my brain shoved it into a mm-hmm. place, you know? And when I came back to New York, I was – crazy i kept thinking i was gonna wow. like the the stroller was gonna pop out of my right, hands right. i kept thinking i was gonna drop her i had all these crazy anxiety feelings i called my ob and they're like you have postpartum anxiety it's very normal blah blah but it was all triggered from this like finger burning or whatever and so my trip takes me back to morocco i had to experience the whole thing again mm. and i had another out uh, the another understanding of it and this is so embarrassing the, my understanding was parents make mistakes. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say it was her fault. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 that bitch. Um, yeah. No, that, that just that like parents make mistakes, and then I made a mistake. Like, and it's not, and then that's what happens. And like, I all of my realizations were the bottom of like a kitten poster. All of them, right. like the, <laughs> this is affirmations. Yeah, one hundred percent. But it's like stuff that you know to be true, but you don't fully in your body know to be true. Right. Well, I I could have told you any of those things. Well, no, exactly. But I I and I would have intellectually understood those things if you told them to me. But I would not have emotionally understood them. Right. Well, can I make a a strong suggestion? Please. Don't see Rain Man. (laughs) Wait. I've seen Rain Man. Well, unsee it. But why? Oh, wait. Now you can. You can see it now because you tripped in on the mushrooms and had that revelation. Yeah. Wait. Why? What happens in Rain Man? That I what, are you fucking see? kidding me? It's the Wait, whole premise of the movie. Is that parents make mistakes? <laughs> it's, he, the, the... I don't remember. I was a child. What happens in the movie? He, uh... You, you, you saw Rain Man as a child? I, my parents... Yeah, my... <laughs> what? <laughs> kind of... First of all, I was a latchkey kid, okay? This is the 80s, this is the 90s. Nobody was around. I was uh, managing myself. There was a lot of inappropriate viewing, but also, I don't remember. When did that, I don't even know when, when but it was many years ago. So what happened? It was. So he's, uh, Uh Dustin Hoffman is Mm. uh, severely autistic and and is a uh, savant with numbers. Right, I remember. Uh, Counting toothpicks. Right, right. And he just knows, you know. and. Tom Cruise, after this happens like a, a second time, like susses it out. He's like, hey, I got to, I know what we're doing. We're going to take him to Vegas and he's going to count cards. Right. And then at the very, it's really good. It's, yeah. a, it's a good movie. And then. Yeah, I at, believe it won a few Oscars even. Uh, 
it definitely won a Clio. Uh, <laughs> but um, possibly a BAFTA. Uh, not a BAFTA, an Obi, um, <laughs> yeah. and a Webby. But uh, um, so after Vegas, he realizes. So they, so they there's a a big uh, uh, you know dramatic revelation that Rain Man. He's not saying Rain Man. He's saying Raymond, which is the guy's name. But he was running a bath and he burned he put too much hot water or something like that for and the he brother burned tom cruise so i can't remember who somebody burned somebody but yeah, yeah i think he burned tom cruise when he was a little baby and then he yeah, this that is, was this his is sounding right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> i could be wrong about no, who burned no that's him. right yeah. i should rewatch and also and unwatch um a lot of crying. Rain man yeah, well, that's like, I mean, it's funny. It is a small, it's like a small thing, right? But it lodges itself in your, me- you know, in your sure. memory. And I, like I, something. when you say that, I wonder if there's something, you know, I certainly, when when my daughter was young, I, uh, you know, did some things that, again, are, are a mistake. I dangled her over outside. I dangled her. Uh, <laughs> over we were a balcony? A balcony in, like, in Germany? Paris. I think <laughs> right. we were in Paris. Paris, okay. And uh, I just wanted to show everybody the bottom of her foot. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And um, so, uh, and I couldn't, I can't, I don't speak for, I mean, I speak a tiny, mm. un peu, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit of French, but um, it, because it sounded like people were saying, show me your infant daughter's, the bottom of her right foot. And I was like, <laughs> all right, because I don't know that much yeah, French. Yeah, yeah, So it's I went and confuse. grabbed her and I wiggled her around, waved yeah. her around. Um, but I remember that, you know, yeah, because uh, paparazzi was there. It was weird. <laughs> um, and then fucking that fucking piece of shit, Michael Jackson stole it oh, from right. me. Then he did totally. it. That, he was it. that was yeah, your bit. That was your bit. That was my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. Dangled my kid over the balcony. in different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and show you know, just show the bottom of her right foot. To is it like is the bottom of her right foot like super? Is that where is, is it gross? It's not gross. It's got a smiley face on oh, it. Oh, um, gosh. Okay, yeah. opposite. Yeah. Uh, I had it tattooed when she was young. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's when you do a tattoo. It's kind of like getting your ears pierced when you're like a baby. That It hurts less. Like, it's a good idea. I mean, yeah, they say it hurts less, but who knows? <laughs> I know. I don't know. Um, I want to... So, continue with the tripping, because you only got to mm. three days. So, yeah. did you trip every single night? No, that would be crazy, because... And as you know, you've done it, you don't know what amount, but uh, so I did the three grams and then the next day you do this like kind of group therapy again, everyone oh, compares like notes. Sounds like a fucking nightmare. You don't like that situation? I, hate I that think shit. I'd much rather group therapy than just me therapy. Oh, no way. And my, my wife's, you know, from uh, Southern California, from Santa Monica. And as am I says, from Palm Springs. Um, well, that's different. It is different. But I mean, I'm also from Southern California. Right. That's why I, I, I got it more geographically specific to Santa Monica so people don't think, oh, Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah. they immediately assume, yeah. yeah. Um, so she's from Santa Monica, which makes her what? Uh, you know, they're they're very kind of, uh, there's a lot of woo-woo, tarot, crystal, yeah. wellness, moon juice, yeah. you know, culty, weird bullshit down yeah. there, tons of it. And- uh, um, and she, you know, retains some of that. And her mom is definitely uh, a whole part of that, you know, um, that stuff. And, um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, essential oils. And yeah. A lot of. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, Burning certain, of sage. Yeah. She's got a little, she's got that up yes. in her office and her, and, and I, uh, and this is established well before I ever met her, but I have a very, strange i think very strong immediate reaction to the smell of burning sage i will get nauseous and i i'm not kidding really yeah i get really like it just my stomach starts to come up and uh and i only know this because when we were doing uh mr show we had a sketch called the last indian i believe and uh um and when we were casting for it uh, we were in this like kind of, you know, just some shitty studio and we small enclosed space, no windows, little conference room thing. And people would come in and read for it. And one guy came in 
and started. And there's like three of us, like me and Dino and Bob Odenkirk. Uh, I mean, uh, Bill Odenkirk and, and Dino Stamatopoulos. And we're like there, you know, casting the guy. And this guy came in, actor, and he had he started burning sage. And I almost threw up. And I know it's the, directly from that, which I had never really smelled Wait, so before. the actor had to burn sage as a part of the audition? No, 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 no. He just came in and oh, to, 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 you know... Uh, to show his uh, bona fides. I see, <laughs> um, I see, I see, I see. Native American right, sage. Right, I see, I see. And yeah. then that just immediately made, made I mean, Did you actually throw up? Or no, did I didn't. Just... I had to oh, leave okay. the room. Yeah. And I never experienced that. And and then- What a weird, it's like an allergy. It kind of, it's yeah. an immediate reaction. And then when years later, uh, many years later, I uh, went- into the hair makeup trailer on Arrested Development to go, you know, just get touched up or something. Somebody was burning sage. I took two steps in. I was like, and I had to leave. And I explained, like, I don't know why I I wish it was in this way, but I cannot smell that without, uh, like, a gag reaction. That's so weird. It's yeah. like your cilantro. Yeah, but it's not just distaste. But I've also never heard of that. I've never heard of anyone being nor, like, I nor can't. Nor have I. Nor yeah. have I. Very but strange. It, it, yeah. So I really can't stand it. And, uh, um, but you know, they'll go and, and my wife and uh, my mother in law, they'll like sage if there's a new space, you know, the house, they're going to sage it and they, okay. whatever that's called, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Getting rid of the spirits, the or evil some eye. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Yeah. Um, fucking thing. <laughs> and, uh, so they got to sage it and <laughs> yeah. whatever. But so group therapy reminds you of this kind of like woo woo like that world. Um, the whole thing that you're describing does, but group therapy as a whole, I I've never participated, so I don't know. But I would imagine I would not like it. I don't mind uh, one on one therapy. Yeah, uh, I think that's good. I think what I like about it is hearing. I mean, you know, is just a little bit, I guess. Just like the the storyteller in me, um, just likes to hear. I just like to hear people. You just like stage time. <laughs> you gotta have some stage time. Oh, yeah, Don't I care need, where I it need comes more from. places to yeah to work out material and group therapy. Is it? Um, no, it's just like it's fun to hear people's weird things. You know, people have so many weird things. Yeah, and then if they're and we're in a situation like that, everyone's just airing it. You know, like it's uh, it makes your weird thing feel less weird and yeah unique, I guess. it definitely makes my weird thing feels let feel less weird or it just it's like oh i thought my weird thing was just specific to me turns out everybody has it everybody's burned their baby's fingers <laughs> 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 but like you know i i or you know or just that like it's an interesting story or like people's parent people talk a lot about their parents obviously mm. that comes up a, a shit ton and it's God, interesting I think to about hear. that you know i think our your kid might be slightly younger. How old is your? She's four. She's four. Yeah, mine's six. Uh, and I just think about, man, what am I doing right now that I'm not even aware of? That's gonna scar her. That forever. I think is fine. Yeah. That's going to, you know, mess her up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess we'll find out in, you know, eighteen years. Or yeah, so. yeah. 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 We'll yeah. When out. she starts writing a solo show about. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> I hope I I was like I hope she's like a lesbian pianist. Oh, you know, that's something. specifically what you want. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I really wanted before she was born was if it was going to be a girl. I wanted a boy, um, it, just because I've been surrounded by women my entire life. Oh, gotcha. And, so you're just like, oh, another yeah. one. And well, it was fine. I mean, either way, I was going to be happy. But uh, um, I wanted to have, if it was a girl, the first female starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Oh, specifically? Yeah, that was my dream. That was okay. my fantasy. And I wanted to get her into baseball. And I took her to a Cyclones game last summer. Uh, Did it resonate? A little bit. She had fun. She had yeah. a lot of fun. There were some of her friends there. And, you know, I don't know. Have you ever seen a Cyclones game? I've seen a Yankees game. Yeah, that's not the same. Okay, <laughs> no. They are two teams that play baseball, but at 
shockingly different levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I have not seen um, Recyclones game. They're like low, low, low single A, and uh, the game was terrible, but uh, but fun. It yeah. was just a, so much fun. And because I don't, if you go see minor league games, they just fill everything with noise. And now we have the hot dog race, okay. and now there's this, and there's this constantly stuff happening in between even a batter coming up like just music right. and contest and you know whatever and it was uh it was really really fun i can't wait to go again but she was you know asking me questions about the what was happening yeah and, and that was great but yeah that was my so your indoctrination effort may still work <laughs> maybe i tried to get her to watch at home but she's uh and i don't I think she has to play Right. Yeah, uh, but I mean, yeah, I, she's she's more um, at this early stage as more of a uh, arts and crafts uh, sensibility. Yeah, and less. Uh, I mean, she's very athletic. She's super fast and beats the shit out of me. Just beats the <laughs> fucking shit out of me. I mean, hard. I mean, I, I stupidly. We enrolled her in Taekwondo classes. Yeah, you know, mine's like in self Taekwondo defense. too. Yeah. Are you in Park Slope or uh, Gowanus? <laughs> no, I live in the. East, oh. I still live in the East Village. Are you still at the same? No, uh, I, oh, okay. I moved up the street, but yeah, but still yeah, in the so East Village. Yeah, so and I lived in the same uh, uh, building. Yes, um, one forty one East Third Street. It's a good building. <laughs> it's a great building. Um, that's how we met, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I did your film. Yeah, uh, or, or the yeah, Muslims yeah, yeah. The Muslims are coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we, all, and also, do you well? Do you remember how you agreed to that? Yes, I had to do laundry. And, no, <laughs> no, no. I, I wrote it. I wrote a letter to you, uh, mm -hmm. and slipped it under your door, asking you if you would sit for an interview for this film. Right. And and then I said at the end, I said we can do the interview in the comfort of your home or the comfort of my home or you know the laundry room. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, okay. I, I, which was a joke to me, and you were like, "Let's do it in the laundry room." So yeah, we, that's more interesting to me. And I had to do more, laundry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, it was more interesting. So there is like just so, like some laundry gently sitting and, in the background. But also, of the it's shot. like a shitty laundry yeah, room. Yeah, it was at like the a, basement of this pre-war building. With machines that didn't work, that yeah. were broken. And a cat running around. And a cat, and like the super was down, yeah, you know, yeah, his yeah, office. Yeah. It was just really kind of, yeah. you know, Chernobyl looking. And, and also like, you know, we at no point address it or anything. It's just that of all the interviews in the film. That's the way to do it. Yours is in the laundry that's room. That's the way. Yeah, that's, I, I honestly, it's like one of my proudest film moments. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. What were we talking about? The uh, Taekwondo. She beats the oh, shit yes. out of you, and and it just made her uh, kicks st more uh, uh, stronger and can reach higher places. And and I mean, she winds up. And luckily, I have that. I can't remember what it's called, but um, about two or three years ago, uh, the fat in my stomach started to harden. Whatever that's called, like what? beer belly. Yeah, yeah. It's a real oh, thing. Oh, like beer bellies are that fat hardened. It's it's uh when the fat you have it's it's not it's like um it it just gets like right now my stomach is like is, very hard. It's hard, yeah. And so but I that's can, I just questioned that's bad, right? <laughs> that's not. No, that's not good. Okay, got you. Like um, it, like if you wanted to make turn that into a six pack, it would take extra work. Okay, got you. That okay. I'm not willing to put in. <laughs> got you. Okay. Um, so when, but when she hits you, it's like a cushion. Uh, it's like a barrier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's uh um, and I can take a punch now in the stomach. Uh, st glass draw. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, uh, yeah. But stomach, I mean, it's just you're gonna hurt your hand. It's right, one of those right. Things. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, I guess it was it a lot of beers that did well, it. Well, uh, what it you know it's. The last couple tours, you know, I've been touring since, uh, and I and I've always up until ten years ago, I'd say, uh, been able to. My metabolism was quick, and I was always able to eat and drink, yeah, whatever, whatever I want, yeah. and and I was, you know, relatively skinny. And then, you know, metabolism starts shifting and changing. And then when I was it, the first time I noticed it, I was in uh, London to do. Uh, the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret and I 
you know, when when we weren't shooting, when we were just writing and doing pre-production, you know, you go out to the pub at yeah. 5.30 well, and you're- That's the least healthy I've ever been in my life is when I lived in London. That, so that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. And I and I put on more weight than I ever had and I felt it, it was really Ugh, uncomfortable. Yeah. And it was like, and I had to go on a diet in like a real specific way. And, and now before I go on a tour- uh, you pregame with a diet. I I did, and I did it this time. I got down to one fifty seven. Ideal weight is one fifty five, and I got to like one fifty seven and a half, knowing that it would go up. Oh, I mean touring. I eat. I mean, it's just the worst. You know, I'm not saying anything also, that has been said a million times, right? But, but it's all. But the interesting thing about touring for me is that it's the. The easiest access food is terrible. Yeah. But I also kind of can't consume it. Like, I find it too disgusting now. My mouth, if I feel like- Not me. The I fast mean, food well, stuff I'm leaves drunk. a film. That's the other thing, is I drink during the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't drink before the show. Right. I drink during the show. I'm doing an hour and a half, usually. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm three beers. And then I was doing, on this last tour, meet and greets, where I would do a shot with everybody- have more beers, then I'd oh. go out, me and Sean Patton, who was opening, would oh, go out God. and hit the bars. And this is, you know, four nights in a row, and then you get back to your hotel room, and I've got potato chips and, you know, some cheese sticks that I found. And right. Like, oh, che I have, there's cheese sticks, all right. And whatever, and then I'll have a bottle of wine. I mean, it would- oh, Wait, I, okay, you can Not a wake bottle, up but, you know, and couple. feel fine after doing all that? I never said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I wouldn't say I feel fine, but I'm very, 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 very used to it. And I can, you know, uh, I can manage. I can do everything. Wow. That, I, I mean, and I look, all drinking. I'm doing is going to, I'm going to the airport. I'm getting up, yeah. getting in a taxi or a lift. Going to the airport, going through security, waiting. I mean, there's not a lot to do. Or driving, drive three and a half hours to the next gig, whatever. And it's the kind of thing, even if I do, and now I won't do more than four days in a row. I do four nights and then I take a night off. But, uh, but, um, and I don't do two shows back to back anymore. I can't do that. But, uh, um, oh, like a seven and a nine. Yeah, I don't yeah. do that anymore. But, uh, um, you know, I will wake up like, oh, geez, and I'll have coconut water and some yeah. uh, Pedialyte, and you and know, it I, works. And it it gets me up to the the point. And initially, like, all right, I'm going to take it easy tonight, you know. But then, by the time it's, I'm, all, I, you know, the the adrenaline boost of doing having a really fun time doing a show, you know, with a, a sold out theater and people are loving it and you just yeah you, you want to keep it going yeah, yeah and yeah. you just feel you know by then it's Booey, uh you know yeah. uh 12 hours after you woke up and you're feeling fine and yeah let's go get a drink let's do it let's see what boise has to show us and, <laughs> and right. uh and and you just sort of start the process all over yeah. again yeah you know? but i definitely have to take more time off in between than i used to right Hey everybody, Frame Bridge makes it easy and affordable to custom frame just about anything. And we have Frame Bridge is fast and we ship your finished frame directly to your house in days. Frame Bridge pricing is fair and transparent. Frame Bridge has framed over 2 million pieces and counting. Frame Bridge has a curated selection of frame styles and design experts to make it fun and easy to choose the perfect frame for your piece. But I'll tell you this from personal experience because I've used Frame Bridge a number of times and I use them online but one time i went to the frame bridge in was it uh uh um cobble hill i think it was one in cobble hill um and i asked if i could have one of their example pieces it was like uh multiple photos of a family you know in the, like this little shadow box thing and they said no and i pretended to be very upset and said, I want that picture. I want these people in my house. And they wouldn't sell it to me. Order online at framebridge.com. You can either upload a digital photo for us to print and frame or mail us your art. We'll mail you free, secure, prepaid packaging to mail us back your art. 
FrameBridge custom frames your piece in our studio using the highest quality materials and ships it to your door for free. Again, I've used FrameBridge numerous times, and I like their stuff. True. It's true. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Visit FrameBridge.com to custom frame just about everything and anything. But that is to say, I know I'm going to gain weight. And also, I don't exercise. In New York, I walk on, a, on an average day um, anywhere minimum two miles a day and yeah. and i and turned off the counter thing on my phone because you know like i guess the world health organization says you should walk walk ten thousand steps or something like that but i would like murder ten thousand is it ten i don't remember what the number is yeah but Folks, it's ten thousand steps uh, up up but the uh, so you're uh, every scraper. yes every person the, the world health organization yeah uh has recommended that every person get at least should climb the Empire State Building, Building once a day. Once a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, and you can that's come down the next day. You camp out, have a little snack, and then come down the next. Come day down and the do next day, and that's your that's your yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, And go to work. Yeah. Um. I I murder that. I do it all the time, and so I meet the threshold. So I just and it was burning. It was like you know draining my battery life or something. So I just like turned it off. But I was also like. Well, like living in New York, you just like have so many steps naturally. Like it's yeah, it's just like become. I don't need a fucking exercise. counter, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean minimum two, uh, unless there's a lot of work where I have to sit down or whatever. Uh, yeah, minimum uh, just running errands and shit, um, two miles, and you know on on a good day five to seven, and then I bike every. You know when I'm doing shows, I, I bike everywhere. I ride my bike so. You know, when you're on the road, you don't get that opportunity. No, you don't. And it's also interesting. I mean, age is such a cruel companion because, you know, my husband just turned 40 and- um, How old are you? I'm in the, that range. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> and, um, and, and he, like, doesn't like- he, so he used to be able to eat whatever, and he was also like a college football player. Mm -hmm. And so he just kind of ate whatever, always athletic, no problems. And now he's like eating a lot, but then it's just not immediately yeah. going away. Yeah, that's... And it's like leading, you yeah. know, it's it's interesting because he just kind of, I think also he thought because he's an athlete, it's just forever. This is mm -hmm. my body forever. I get to have a great body or whatever. And it's like, no, like it stops doing yeah. that right around now. Yeah, that's right. You know, and yeah, and it's rough. It's a rough realization. And then, there, yeah, that's, I think, I th you know, obviously that's, it's a good time for a midlife crisis. Well, I mean, if you, you know, get your shit straight, if it helps, yeah. But he, I'm assuming he doesn't drink a lot. No, he doesn't yeah. drink at all. That makes it worse. <laughs> Neither of us drink. We, I, I have like one glass of wine every two months. Oh, man, weird. Yeah, and yeah, And what is yeah. that glass but of wine I, like? I mean, is I do obviously treat? illicit drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do, but psychedelic. Two, I've done two completely different things. It's all right. And, and I've done, and I do weed very infrequently but i will do it and so there you go i used to smoke a lot and uh and i just can't anymore and i haven't for a long long time really but uh i also it doesn't mix well like i will if i get high and uh and drink, and, and drink it just it's not a good combo well like i wasn't really ever into it and then i i had a really bad breakup mm-hmm and uh, and I was crying a ton. I was like, a, I had been with this guy for like very many years, blah, blah, blah. So my friend was like, oh my God, you know, you should just become a pothead. It'll stop the tears. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fantastic idea. How do I become such a thing? I started like watching YouTube videos on how to roll a joint. I wanted to be like a good student what? of the pr practice. <laughs> and Kate, you I know, watch. Because I'm such a nerd. And uh, and I like, and I had my, I was like, uh, can I procure an amount of marijuana, please? You know what I mean? And like, I would, I would, uh, so I obtained some marijuana. I had my processes in order. And like, I got high the first night and I I was like, oh, this is great. I'm not crying. This is fun, you know? And then the next night, like, I did it again. And then the third night, like, I forgot. And I was like, oh, I forgot. Okay. And then the fourth night, I forgot. I was like, oh, damn it. And I was like, do I, you know, set an alarm clock or something to, like, how to, you know, like, to remind myself <laughs> to do pot? Man, you are a weirdo. I know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and so I, and I, I really tried, um, and it just like didn't stick. You know what I mean? I tr- it, it just didn't stick as a thing for me to do frequently. Yeah, well, you don't have to. What about edibles? And then edibles, I feel like I've I've obviously done them, but like they just don't hit at the right point, or I even mm. haven't figured out the the magic recipe of like when to take it when i want to feel good they're trickier because you can't like if you smoke a bowl you've got a pretty good sense of when that high is going to peak and when it's going to go away yeah with edibles you just it's a little more of a crap shoot i i was living in paris for i've lived in paris here and there for a couple of years and what uh, were you doing there I was like waiting tables and I was teaching English and I, I went to the Sorbonne for a minute mm-hmm. and whatever. And um, and they do they do hashish, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's their version. And um and a and a friend of mine, I was like, oh, if I didn't want to smoke this, how how else could I take it? And they were just like, oh, just mi- like melt it in some butter over a stove, and mm-hmm. then just put the butter on a baguette, <laughs> right? Just a very right. French way of doing an edible. And so I well, did. It's got a baguette in it. it right, yeah, exactly. Very and so I did that, and I thought I was just I j- again I just had no concept of the amount. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so I put some vague amount on the stove, whatever, I ate it, and then I truly fell to my knees on uh, on a bridge over the, the Seine. Like, I was just like, whoa! I was so out of my mind um, and, like, had to be carried home. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm not good at figuring out amounts. That Yes, I've done that. I made that mistake with... Uh the same thing with hash and uh, uh, making uh, brownies. Yeah. And um, and it was only much, much later was like, oh, wow, I have no idea how much that is and how much <laughs> I put in and how, what, and uh, and uh, it was a, it was not a bad experience, but it wasn't great. And we were in Vegas. It was me and a bunch of friends had gone out from L.A. And uh, I mean, I couldn't talk at one point. I just had to be led around the casino. Um, And then uh, with. (laughs) This is so embarrassing. I'm not going to tell you the whole story because it's really, really embarrassing. But I got I I used to uh, do a bunch of drugs and um, and you know, uh, delivery services are the best thing in the whole world. And uh, my guy, I wanted to get some... This is in Vegas? No, no, no. No, this that was a okay. different story. So this is here now. This is here okay. uh, a long time ago before my daughter was born. Um, and so my guy, who was my guy, yeah, uh, I, you know, texted what I wanted. It's all code words. I want yeah. cotton candy and, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. And, uh, and he... Sends his guy and he rings the bell and, you know, he goes, oh, uh, they didn't have cotton candy, so we gave you some uh, Snap and Pops or whatever the code right, was. Right. I was like, oh, all right. And you ha- he had a card that I had gotten a long time ago with the- with the, a um, punch card every time you got the like last <laughs> no, joint was that would free. Be awesome though. <laughs> no, a uh, a lit of what everything meant. Okay, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, salt and pepper is heroin, and da 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 is this, and da 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 is that. Okay. So it's a whole list, right? Yeah. And uh, and I go, oh, okay. Uh, he was like, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I had my money anyway. Oh my god, I'm so nervous for where this story him. is going. Okay. So it was. Ketamine. Ah, that's where I thought this was going. Uh, so it's ketamine, which I had only done once, yeah. and it was one of those things that it just—I'm not a downer guy at all. Yeah, uh, much more of an upper guy, and uh, and the uh, I had done it once in in London, and I just it was didn't do it's a like whole a lot. It's like a powder. What does it look like? I've never even yeah, seen it's it. Like in a, a, it's it's na- like a form. crystal-y powder. Oh, got you. Yeah. And then okay, so you right, so you just took it without knowing. Yes, and the same fucking mistake and i was by myself oh God. i was by myself that's probably for the best and uh i forgot to take my dog out for a, a whole i mean it, it, i was so how long fucked up uh oh god it was it probably was 
12 hours, something like that, I'm going to say. Jesus it was Christ. So, so oh, your dog didn't poop outside for 12 hours? Oh, longer than that. I probably <gasps> had taken, no, I had taken, I'm saying the whole trip was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't call it a trip so much, but uh, it was just a miserable, terrible experience. And I went and I, um, there was a, some in the packet left and I just flushed it down the toilet and was like, I'm never doing this again. This was awful. Yeah. Well, I've, my experience with ketamine is because that's what they gave me during my C-section. Mm. So, what, what, did you go to a doctor in Jamaica? <laughs> no, my body uh, wouldn't handle, um, you know, it's funny, I do stand up about this, but like my body, I, they gave me an epidural, like what they mm -hmm. do generally sure. for a C-section to numb your bottoms. Yeah. And it just like- Oh, you have more than one bottom? I <laughs> oh my all gosh. of the bottoms. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what makes me special. How many bottoms do you have? About, I've got about four bottoms. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Right. And um, so they gave me a bunch of epidural, like they they- they uh they they tap your spine right yeah. so they like did that like three or four times and it just like didn't go everywhere like the 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 material would is supposed to numb everything just wouldn't numb everything and they did they know that before they no. started I they oh learned God. in the process that I have quote Nagin. very fibrous skin but wait so you so did they start to make an incision. So, no, no, oh, yeah, so they did. So they go, can you feel that? I mean, I was like, I, I mean, uh, I think I can feel it. Like, it doesn't feel, it's not like the was most- it, Was it a scheduled C? Did you know no, you were going to have no, that? No, oh, it so was this after, is all It was like, after like oh, 24 brother. hours of misery. Oh, my of, gosh. Like, whatever, feeling all of the pain and, and them trying to open my cervix with like a car wrench. And it was like <laughs> very, it was a very, very difficult day. And um, which has also ended up being a part of one of my mushroom trips because that was one of the traumas. Uh, and so at the end, oh boy, this uh, sounds terrible. No, it was it was terrible, and uh, um, and so they, no wonder you burned your kid's finger. <laughs> a payback. I get it now. Um, and so so like I so they, but they really tried every medieval. It was like Theon Greyjoy, right in in Game of Thrones. Like that's what they did to I me. Seen it, but... Oh, spoilers. Um, that it was just like medieval torture, basically. And then at the end, they were like, okay, we have to do a C section. So then. They they tried the epidural, but it's like my body didn't take the epidural, and so mm. um, although it, terrible. it was terrible, I did vomit a lot. Anyways, uh, and then <laughs> and then it was like you and Sage, um, and then I they were like, okay, we're gonna have to put you under, we're gonna give you ketamine. Wow. Um, and I was just like, what? Like, that, am I supposed to? Are we at a rave? What's happening? You know? And so I didn't know that ketamine was even in use for this kind well, of. It's thing. a horse tranquilizer. Yes, and yeah. I am a horse, a, a four bottomed <laughs> horse, um, and so that yeah, and it's and it's interesting because were they able to play like Chemical Brothers or Daft Punk I know, or I, well, Skrillex actually yeah. delivered Skrillex, the Special K into my body, so that that worked out. Um, but it was a, uh, I had I hated it because it's like I don't know what yours was like, but it's like I went into multiple dimensions of space and time, and like I constantly it was like very existential. And like, I just was questioning existence constantly and I couldn't tell what century or time I was in. Time was weird and fluid and simultaneous and multiversal and it was just horrible. Um, and then I actually woke up in the middle of my C-section because mm. the C-section had problems and I, and they oh, were like- God. in <laughs> this sounds terrible. I tell it there. It's, it's a good 15 minute set. Um, and, uh, and, and, I woke, and then I woke up and they, because the C-section lasted for two and a half hours. They're supposed to be like 20 what? minutes. I know. It, I'm telling you, fi fibrous skin folks issues. Um, so that means it doesn't cut easily. It doesn't cut easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, what yeah. about an acetylene blowtorch? Um, <laughs> I know. Is that something you that should use, yes, metallurgy and glass making you're just techniques. Just hearing all of a sudden, on... you hear like a, <laughs> <laughs> a um, dog. There's a canine, <laughs> canine squad, German shepherds. Oh, it was. But so the, I, I woke up in the middle, and uh, and they weren't done. And then I was like, hey, That's guys. like a Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, kind of thing. it was really violent. And you're like, oh my god, this is really happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then uh, and then the I heard the anesthesiologist say because I started screaming. Oh god, uh, damn! <laughs> this I'm is sorry, horrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when I started screaming, and the anesthesiologist oh, said, fuck. "When you scream like that, it makes me look bad." And then and then he re-upped my cane wow. and I went back under. 
Yeah. It was really like, it was a time. Uh, That's one of the douchiest fucking things I've ever heard. <laughs> I know, but it's funny because I- Like he's scolding you? Like he's well, pissed he was off? he making or? like a bit of a joke. Like he was, oh. he, was, he was doing a joke in the middle of my- really utter trauma um but and i guess it's happened before you know like they didn't know how long i was gonna it was gonna take so they just didn't give me enough and it happens i guess but uh but i and i remember like when i woke up i said to my husband like hey did the anesthesiologist again like because i had heard so many things i had spoken to so many historical figures (laughs) by that time i couldn't tell what was real and what wasn't i was like did someone in the room say (laughs) when you scream like that it makes you look bad he's like oh yeah and, oh yeah, uh, we laughed for a minute. We oh, had to stop had the process. We were we were enjoying it so much. He did like a tight ten, and then he went back to it. So, yeah. it, who was your favorite and why historical figure that you talked to? Well, and this is, again, I don't know that this is appropriate at all. But I, my favorite historical figure was Gandhi. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would, it's, I would say it was a cross between Gandhi and Lincoln, and both of them just like had really. Uh, in the afterlife, they've settled into just like a kind of weirdness. Um, for Gandhi, it was just like he he was literally like, I am a slut now. And he was like oddly like trying to get laid. And it was a weird scene for him. Well, that was part of his, you know, that was his one of his real, secret. Yeah, his, his actual thing, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. A, he was so a he horn was, dog. He's just like an overt horn dog in the yeah. afterlife. Um, Even more than in real life. Yeah. That yeah. guy was fucking nonstop. Was he really yeah, nonstop? Yeah. But I don't actually know enough about his history to yeah. like, you know, which is also weird that I met him. Um, and why do you think that's not appropriate to say? Oh, I don't want to besmirch the dead, I guess, or something. No. I'm not sure. Is that really? It's not a strong besmirchment. I guess not, especially if there is a if there is a real world. There's also real world accounts of it. I guess it's not a strong besmirchment. And right. and what about Lincoln? Lincoln, interestingly, this isn't famous a famous bes- masturbator. Was he really? Yeah, yeah. Are you serious? No, no. Okay, <laughs> I'm not serious about any of it. Um, no, but Lincoln had kind of settled into like really. Um, he was just like very he was like oh, what's the word um he's just like not confident about himself mm-hmm. and and he was just like does anyone remember me and i was like dude there's like so many like high schools tell named about after the fucking you. penny yeah oh i didn't tell him about the penny yeah, but i talked a lot about the schools that were named and after the five dollar bill Oh shit! I could have talked about that too. I didn't mention c- currency at all. I focused mainly on how very many schools and, are named after him. And Lincoln Toe in uh, um, it's either Chicago and or also LA. Lincoln, Nebraska, mm-hmm. a town. Yeah. Um, and so I was, oh, yeah. I, I was like, right. just like you're and Lincoln so... Logs, like uh, oh, the Lincoln, recreation yeah, of his shit. That's right. I, I, I was so I was basically there to like comfort. I him. I wanted to take a pause and go back to that very funny joke I just said. <laughs> Lincoln Logs. Yeah. A recreation, After, of, recreation his of his shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very funny. Okay. Um, Thank you. Link, that's can, just for the listeners, his his poop, in case you didn't yeah. know what shit Lincoln meant Logs in that Lincoln Logs is an old game that kids played in the 50s and 60s, I think. Which I literally, like, only vaguely, even, what was it? Did you ever play it? No, no. It's a little before my time, but it was like, I think you just, you got a big thing and you built a ca- log cabin what I don't did know. it have to do with lincoln nothing uh he was born in a log cabin oh okay okay oh so it was like legos but for log cabins yeah i don't think they sna- you couldn't make much more than a log cabin <laughs> i think um but I just mean, one back, style of log cabin back in the 50s and 60s kid you didn't oh, need a whole lot to entertain I kids fucking it's not like up. today with the screens and the oh. tiktoks and the whatnot oh. and the like we go what what about you know what we did in our day you, in, you burn the, day, you burn ants with a magnifying glass we had a teddy glass. ruxpin and you used to push his belly and he said something he said what you said oh that's right he repeated he repeated like a yeah. parrot but he was a bear yeah so uh that was uh, lincoln yeah he was not he was very like he was not a confident guy okay well you know i hope you uh i hope you set them at ease I spent a long time of my K now, in did, my K hole. Gandhi try to get with you? No, you know it's mostly like it's like he wanted, like, t- like tips on how to get 
ladies for oh, me. Oh, that's weird. Like I was, yeah, like I was like like Awkward. a wing woman or something. Right, right, right. His. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... Did you help him out or? No, I was like, yeah, I was super accommodating, yeah. <laughs> oh, so was it successful? <laughs> um, That's like, I, I mean, I don't know if I went to the dimension where he was actually implementing. I did not go to the dimension but you gave where him he was tips implementing. I gave him tips. Scroll right, scroll I was just right, like, scroll, I was right, like, yeah, scroll you, right, scroll right, scroll right. <laughs> swipe right. And Swipe, yes. um, see, I'm an oldie. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and 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 li- spend a lot of time asking questions and listening. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Keep the first date short. Leave them wanting more. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, a good one. If you're not gonna, if they're not gonna give it up, then yeah, keep it short. Keep, Cut it short. Right, right. Yeah, as soon as you find <laughs> out, like, oh, she's not gonna fuck me tonight. Get out of there. Right. That's your advice. <laughs> No, but you know, I've done an entire podcast episode on another, I can't remember the name of the podcast right now, but anyways, on another podcast, they at, because I a, a producer heard me talking about my like rules of online dating, and I was very good at online dating. I've never done it. You've never uh, done it? Nope. Oh, man. I was, uh, people hate it. I'm sure you've heard. I, well, I have very mixed feelings about it. Like a friend of mine very close friend, said his son who is, I think he's, I don't know, he's 23-something-ish, maybe 24, I'm not sure, maybe 24, but he said to him, uh, he's like, dad, he was talking about uh, online, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, Tinder, right? Uh And um, uh, he said, that uh, you know, in in the conversation, he's like, "Oh, I've had sex with sixty five. I've had sex six with sixty five times." The son said that to the dad. Yeah, or sixty five people, something like that. And I was like, "Holy shit!" I didn't even, I didn't get to sixty five until I was, you know, I don't even know if I got sixty five. I, right. I, but I was like, you know, I was in my. Uh, I mean, I've been <clears throat> faithful to my wife, but you know, I was in my late forties. You know, by right the time when I you got, settle down. But I mean, by the time I got to that many, okay, uh, uh, not that pointers. it was a, not that it was something. I was, so did you, were you t- just have like a, like a, an Excel spreadsheet or whatever? You were just like tracking it. Uh, I had like the the wall with all the yarn no, and the gotcha. you know like yeah, the yeah, murder, like the, yeah, the wire, to, yeah, 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 for the sure. wire, yeah. Um, uh, no, but what? So as 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 it, you look at that and go, man, that's that's amazing, I guess, and that's, no, but it also feels empty, no. Well, that's what we put onto it, yeah. and and but maybe that's his goal. And I don't think that's his goal. And I, and, but I think it's we project onto that like, oh, it's got to be empty. It's got to be an empty experience. But maybe that I think part of the appeal is that you don't get bogged down. Everybody, it's a transactional, you know, uh, situation where it's like I'm going to give you this, you're going to give me that. You get laid, I get laid, you go, we go our separate ways. And which is kind of a, a, some people, that's what they want. And, uh, and the thing that I th- know is missing is, and I don't know what life is like out there now. Yeah. But there's a, a real thrill in, like I'm gonna, and, and I mean this. This might be big city specific. Um, certainly New York, East mm-hmm. Village mm-hmm. in the early aughts, you know, mm-hmm. um, was a very special time. And you'd go, you know, it's like you'd go to the bar with some friends, and you had like you know your five, six, seven places that you'd go, mm-hmm. and you'd meet somebody. Yep. You wouldn't go there to meet somebody. You but weren't you just trying. Would. Yeah. You would. You there be a, a connection, yep, a spark. You're a flirting, make out sesh. Uh, yeah, you're flirting, yep. and uh, you know your apartment is literally Around four blocks corner. away. And I mean, it's it was a so they'll they won't have that. That's a really cool thing. It's a cool thing. It's also I think it's like truly formative. You know what I mean? Like I think you need to go yeah. to a bar and talk to a stranger and like. Have flirtations, yeah. And then... it's, a, it's it's fun. It's and even when it doesn't work out, that's its own story. experience that's and story. A, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a story. I mean, because uh, on the on the girl end of mm-hmm. this uh, heterosexual scenario, 
Um, it's like then the next day you're at brunch and it's just like, what happened to you? What happened to you? Mm -hmm. What happened to you? And like, everyone is just dishing, dishing, dishing. And it is the most fun gossip that has yeah. ever been gossiped. And it, and it's funny because it literally, you know, it like was an episode of girls. Like it was like, that's, I feel like it was very much like how things went down in New York city in the yeah. aughts and the, and then even in the early tens or whatever, tweens um it's like it was it i i like in that frisson of like you don't know what's going to happen that night and you never know who yeah. you could end up with is would you really would you exciting. explain to our uh listeners and viewers who didn't go to spend time at paris what a frisson is <laughs> like a just like a tinge like a soupçon <laughs> of <laughs> energy yeah yeah yeah, a little conflict, a little uh, yeah, tension, tension, or something. Yeah. Um. Now, so Nikki and I end every podcast the same way. Yeah. Uh, by asking, uh, and thank you very much for coming on. Oh, uh, thanks I think so we much, should man. start. <laughs> um, by asking everyone, uh, so Israel or Hamas, <laughs> and why, and why. Where do you where do you stand on this? That's um that's how that's how you're doing every pod. Everyone gets asked, and this is prior to the conflict. Oh yeah, yeah, you were just doing it. Yeah, yeah I just yeah, that's yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah, I've been yeah, doing it for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, Israel, yeah. Hamas. Where do you stand? Just like a light way to just get people. Usually, I start it. with that. I start. Oh, with I it. see. Yeah. I see. Ooh, I actually got to warm up to it. Yeah. Um. You think about your answer. <laughs> And I am going to, so uh, I ask everybody a question from my daughter. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and everybody, it was a different question for everybody. And she has different questions. She's given me a bunch. Okay. Um, so, Nagin, why are dogs so fast? Oh, why are dogs so fast? I actually, I have a, a dog, a Pomeranian. He is very fast. Um. And I think it's because they were, they have a gene, they share some genes with wolves who are out there running around trying to catch stuff to eat. Hmm. Do you buy that? Um, I mean, technically. Um, yeah. I don't know if she'll be thrilled with the answer. No, she's not going to love it. Mm -hmm. I will also say on the wolf front, mm -hmm. they've done like studies on the difference between a wolf and a dog, and they found the gene that is the difference between a wolf and a dog. What is it? And it's a friendliness gene. Because oh, really? You can, and it, you can train- Allowing it to be domesticated? Yes. Oh, interesting. So because, the, because dogs want to please you. And but that's, that, that's something they evolved to have. As yeah, I, as like I understand it, dogs evolved. This gene mutated or whatever and became the dog gene. So that they would, and then you know that that is also why now a cat's uh, mewing, 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 uh, mm, mew, mew, both mew, of you those. Know, um, sounds like a baby. Is they learned oh. thousands of years ago that the baby would get attention, and yeah, so wild. the cat developed the ability to, to mimic like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because this is going way, way, way back, but they didn't always sound like that. Meow, you know. Yeah. It, it used to be like, "Hey, what's <laughs> up? Yo, yo." And they developed a, right. They were like, we yeah. should sound more like those babies. But that's true. That is a true thing. And then, and dogs developed the. Uh, so now you're making it more specific. A, a, the developed a gene which allows them to be domesticated, and they and just trained learned. and yeah. all that stuff. Because a wolf, you can try. You cannot train a wolf. You can try to teach a wolf. Uh, an old wolf new tricks, but it's not. <laughs> but it's not. And you can yeah. lead a wolf to water, but yeah. it doesn't mean it's going to drink it. Right, you right, know? right, exactly. And you it's can put lipstick on a wolf. It's not going to make in any. But listen, if you get somebody <laughs> breaks up with you, there's a lot of wolves in the sea. So don't worry about it. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. All right, Nagin Prasad, thank you very much. Thank you so much for yeah. having me. Yeah. And now we got to fucking redo this shit. <laughs> when I, like in December or something like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> on on my pod on your podcast yeah well luckily we don't talk like it's all just like i come in with ta- like things from the news and then you just respond <gasps> Ooh, sorry i just got bored <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. That was a HeadGum Podcast.